Hello and welcome once again to my channel where I seek to provide um, Oracle related content uh, for your personal and professional uh, development. And uh, if you like my videos, uh, please go ahead and click on the like uh, button. Uh, please also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you stay informed of when we release new content. So uh, welcome back to our multi-part series uh, on how to create uh, an Oracle Rack poster and eventually uh, an Oracle Rack database. So uh, this is the fourth video of this series. And in the first three videos, um, in the first one, we did prepare our Oracle Linux server. In the second video, we cloned that server and made some network uh, configurations um, to that server. And in the third video, uh, we created disks uh, to allocate for uh, ASM uh, storage. So this video uh, would be focused, would be focusing on installing uh, Oracle Grid Infrastructure 12C. So let's go ahead and get this video started. Um, so uh, we are going to be installing uh, Oracle uh, grid infrastructure as the grid user. So uh, first, uh, I want us to see, uh, because in the previous video, we created ASM disks, uh, but because uh, we don't want to run into permission issues, uh, we want to assign uh, the permissions on that, uh, on that, on that, on those disks to grid. So um, if you remember, uh, we did an ls minus l dev sd star. Now, if you look at this, uh, these are the partitions we created and they all belong to root. So sd, they all belong to root. So uh, we wanna change these permissions and make these guys belong to grid. So we're gonna change the ownership. We're gonna change the ownership of sdb1, uh, which is this first one, SDB1, we want to change the permissions of that. And we're going to do this on both nodes, on node one and node two. So let's go ahead and do that on node one. And then let's go ahead and do that also on node two. So for each of these permissions, uh, we are going to do on node one and on node two. So let's go back to node one. We change this. And then we change the ownership. And then let's do the final partition. Let's copy this. And then we change this on node one. And then we change this on node two. So if we go ahead and run our ls minus l on that, uh, what are we going to see? We see now that this is grid O install for DB1, grid O install for DC1, and grid O install for DD1. Uh, let's go ahead and double check on this side and make sure that our changes are effective. So Again, DB1, DC1, and DD1. So, um, so that is looking good. So um, on node one, um, I'm going to create a stage location. That stage location is going to be used um, uh, to, of course, stage the software uh, that we would be using. Uh, but because of course, uh, we wanna use the permissions that are appropriate uh, we would certainly use the grid user to create that stage location. So I would exit out of, you know, this root sessions here, or rather I would probably just go to my sessions and then I open up a session as grid, which I already have here. So um, if you don't know or are not familiar on how to do that, you click on the SSH on the session, SSH, and you want to get that IP address. Um, let me just get the IP address so that if you are following this for the first time, um, minus I, and that is on note one, which is 56111. You wanna make sure that you open up a session, go to SSH, on the remote host, you wanna put the IP address and specify the username greed. Now, I already have this session created, so I'm not gonna duplicate it, but this is all you have to do, you hit okay, and then it's gonna ask you, uh, for Grid's password, which of course is Oracle if you've been following the videos. So um, I will leave that open and then I would go to my sessions and then I would open up this session as Grid, which I already have uh, saved here. So um, as the Grid user, 
um, I want to make this directory U01 stage. And I'm going to change the permissions on that directory so that I use that also for Grid and for Oracle as well. So make their U01 stage. And I will change the permissions on that stage folder to 775. That way, Oracle also would be able to use that. And while we are getting for Oracle, getting ready for Oracle, the same method I showed you on how to open up a session for Grid, you would use the same to open up a session for Oracle, which I already have here. So I would open up that session for Oracle as well. And uh, for the Grid user, um, if you've been following me, one of the reasons I like Mobile XTEM is because I can do file transfer in here. So I want to go over to that U01 location, U01 stage location. And I want to upload the software. So that software, I have it saved somewhere on my, um, oh, I think I have, let me, let me insert my external drive. I have it saved on an external drive. So let me go ahead and do that so that when that external drive pops up, let me go to my SFTP tab again, and then I would upload, and then now it would be on my external drive. So um, I have a folder here, Rack Projects, and I have the Grid Home and the database software. So I want to upload the Grid Home as Grid. Grid is the one that I want to have permissions on this. So if you see my SFTP, um, it is actually currently in the process of uploading. So I will wait for this to finish, and then I would upload the database software as the Oracle user. So uploading the grid software as the grid user, and I would upload the Oracle software as the Oracle user. So we are about 60%. So it shouldn't take too long. It's not a big file. Okay, good. So now you can see that in this location, we have that file fully uploaded. Now, if I CD to U01 stage, stage, and I do an LL, you would see that file in here already. So before we do anything with this, let's go ahead to the Oracle user. And our Oracle user, we would open up its own uh, SFTP tab. And I would also go to that stage location, U01 stage. And I would upload the database software, this one. And this also should, shouldn't take too long. They're slightly bigger than the grid home, uh, but it shouldn't take too long. So the next step of it, while this is working, I can go over to our grid uh, terminal. And this is the grid home. This is a grid home that comes zipped. So what I want to do is I want to unzip this file into the location I created to host our grid home. So uh, I would use the unzip uh, Linux, this file. And I will point it with the minus D switch uh, to U01 app one to grid. So that is the location that I would use for my grid home. This is my grid home location. So I will unzip this whole file into this location. So let's go ahead and do that. And all of this is only going to be done on node one. In the installation process, the binaries will be copied over to node two. Now, while that is working, I'll go over to my Oracle tab and see. Okay, so this finally uploaded. So um, let me cd to U01 stage and I run an LL and then I see, of course, here that our 12C uh, database 
software has been uploaded. Now, what I want to do is because the Oracle database software doesn't come, uh, the Oracle database home doesn't come zipped in this uh, version. Um, I would unzip this file into this location. What it's going to do is it's going to create a separate folder called database. And within that database, uh, there are some things that we are going to do. Um, so let me go ahead and unzip this right here. I'm not going to specify any location for it. Let's see if this is finished. Okay, so this is finished. So um, if I run an LS minus L into this U01 grid home that we wanted, uh, let's just run an LS. Let's not run an LS minus L. Let's run an LS. That way it doesn't run through the whole screen. So this, uh, uh, the folders that are needed in order for us to successfully run our cluster software. Now within this folder, of course, you have the bin where the binaries are located. So we'll get back to this here in a little bit. So this also unzipped successfully. Remember I said it would create a folder called the database folder. So if we CD into this database folder and we run an LS, there are some files that are very important for us to, um, that we would be using. So the run installer would install the database software. Now for now, I want to go into this folder, the SSH setup. The reason I want to do that is when you're running uh, a cluster, uh, you need to have passwordless communication for all the users between those clusters. So um, I would do that as the root user. So uh, first of all, uh, let me see my print working directory right here. So it's U01 database stage. Let me CD into SSH setup, and then I will do my print working directory. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to take this over to our root terminal right here. So I want to CD into that location, uh, LS, that's LL. Um, so there is a, um, an executable they call the SSH user setup. So that is the command I would be using. So as the root user, I first of all will want to run the SSH passwordless SSH setup between both nodes as the root user. So I would copy this whole command and paste it here. So, I mean, if, if I'm going too fast for you, just go ahead, feel free to pause the video, make sure you have the commands right, uh, because trust me, you only want to do this once. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, I would hit enter, and it would ping both nodes, making sure that they are reachable. And it's going to ask me if I want to proceed and set me as for the password. So do I want to proceed? Yes. I want to add the password for root, which is Oracle. Oracle, just follow the prompts, Oracle, and one last time, Oracle. So it has created the key pair and automatically these key pairs will be copied over to um, the different nodes. Now, I would use the same and create the SSH setup for the Oracle user. I would copy that command and paste it here. Now, this is the Oracle user's passwordless SSH setup. So let's go ahead and hit enter. It's going to do the same thing. Yes, I want to continue. Oracle, Oracle, Oracle. Oracle. All right, pairs have been created. And that is good. So the last one we're going to do would be for the grid user. So we set up passwordless SSH for our grid user. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then bring it over here. Make sure that this is grid. And then I hit enter. It's going to do the same.
All right, I want to continue, yes. Oracle, 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 Oracle. So key pairs have been generated. Now we're gonna test this SSH, of course. So, um, so this is, we've successfully established our passwordless SSH. Now, what does that mean? That means if I SSH from node one to node two, irrespective of which user I am using, I should not be prompted uh, to provide a password. So let's go ahead and test that. So let's, we are on rack node one right now. Let's SSH, oh, I, I was typing in a different environment. So let's SSH to rack node two. And if everything goes well, I shouldn't be prompted for a password. So there we are, rack node two. Let me exit out of this. And let me go to rack node two. And I want to SSH to rack node one. I should not be prompted for a password, which effectively is the case. So it works. So let's go ahead and test that for free. So uh, let's do uh, SSH to rack node two, since we are on rack node one. I should not be prompted, which is good. So I'm on rack node two. So I would SSH from rack node two to rack node one. I shouldn't be prompted, so that's good. So let's exit out of this, exit out of this, and we are back to where we started. Let's do the same for Oracle. So for Oracle, let's SSH to rack node. This is rack node one, so we go to rack node two. I have not been prompted, that is good. Let's go back to rack, SSH to rack node one. I should not be prompted. Oh, this is not right. I should, there shouldn't be a space here. So that should work without any issues. So let's exit and let's exit and that's good. So um, right now we have been able to set up our passwordless SSH. Um, so what we are going to do right now is just to go ahead as a grid user and start the process of installing uh, our grid infrastructure. So uh, where is the grid tab? Here is the grid tab. Now let's clear all of this here just to be um, clean. Um, let's see the over here. Let's clear this. All right. Now um, one thing is very important. Um, we just want to see what the status is. Remember, uh, there is a service called the SH, SSHD. Uh, I just want to see what the status is. And if it's not enabled, I would go ahead and enable it. So uh, system status SSHD service is currently enabled. So I like that. Um, I can also check that. This is for node one. I'm probably just going to check this. Uh, let's, let's check this using the root access. Let's copy this system CTO. So that is enabled, that's good. Let's go ahead and check this on node two. That's enabled as well, that's good. So we just wanna make sure that that service is enabled. So let's clear our screen. And then let's go ahead of course and start the process of installing our grid infrastructure. Now, uh, it is very important. There is a utility called the cluster verifier utility. And what that utility does is it kind of goes through some pre-checks to make sure that your cluster, of course, is ready for installation. And um, sometimes, well, certainly gonna see errors, uh, but you wanna make sure that you fix as most of the errors as you possibly can uh, before you run your grid setup to set up your uh, grid infrastructure. So I'm going to run that cluster verification utility on rack node one and rack node two of course, with a fix up so that we see how that goes. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Oh, I have to first of all, CD to the location where I can find that, right? Um, it's currently in that grid home that we, uh, that we uh, unzip the grid, the zip grid home into. So, Within this location, if I run an LS, uh, there is the run cluster verify utility. Uh, that is what I want to do. So let's go ahead and rerun this. So we're gonna run the cluster verify this. Um, 
the stage is the pre-install for CRS. And then we go ahead and do that. So let's wait while we um, default Oracle inventory group cannot be determined. Um, that's not something I need to worry about yet. So let's give it some time and see what the checks are going to come out looking. We're seeing a lot more pass than fails. So that's that's a good sign. Um, when it finishes, we are going to get a summary. Now, I did run it with a fixed subscript. So um, it may ask me to run a fix up if it has one. All right. So it is asking me to execute a fix up. And I would run as root on node two and node one. So I will start off with node two as my root user. I would run that fix up script. Okay. And then on node one, I would also run that fix up script. Okay. And then I return here and it says, press the enter key to continue after executing this. So I would go ahead and hit enter. All right. So uh, let's take a look at some of the errors and see if it's something that we need to worry about. Um, as for the summary, failures were encountered. So physical memory, it is asking for eight gig. Well, I currently have it assigned as six gig. If you do have sufficient space on your laptop that you can, you can assign at the level of the server uh, right here. Um, remember our servers are running with base memory six gig. Uh, you would have to shut it down and increase this to at least eight gig if you have that amount of memory. I'm gonna ignore this and just move forward. Uh, all of this, uh, memory swap size, I'm going to ignore those. Um, there is the CVU Q disk. Uh, that's a package. Let me try to see if I can yum install that package. And of course, I would always try to yum install as root yum install. Install minus y that package and let's see what it says. There's nothing to do. All right, well, if there is nothing to do, then I would go ahead and ignore that as well. Okay, there's nothing to do. All right, I'll go ahead and ignore those as well. All right, so at this point, um, I would proceed with running my grid infrastructure. Um, and when we launch that, we would certainly uh, see exactly um, the prompts as they come. We would see the different things that we need to do. So let's go ahead. Um, again, LS uh, gives us this. So our grid setup.sh, this is the script that we are going to run. So let's call it up, grid setup.sh. So let's call it up and wait for our uh, graphical user interface so that we can go step by step to see what we are doing. So I am going to configure grid infrastructure for a new cluster. So this is the option I'm going to choose. I'm going to configure an Oracle standalone cluster. It's not part of a domain. 
I'll go ahead and choose that. Now here, um, so let me take you over back to uh, note one and let's cut the contents of our Etsy hosts. Now, if you see the configuration for our Etsy host, we had a public IP, we had a private, we had a virtual. So, um, and our scan name is Rack Note Scan. But here it defaults to Rack Note Cluster Scan. You want to make sure that it is the same as you have it in your Etsy or a tab file, which is a Rack Note Scan. So, we are configuring the Rack Note Cluster. And our scan name is going to be our rag node scan. Now we're not going to make any changes to the scan port. We are not going to configure grid naming services. So let's go ahead and validate that. So it identified already the local host from which we are running this. So we're going to add the nodes that we want to be part of this cluster. So let's go ahead and add. Now we are going to add the public host name for the second node, which is the rack node to the local domain that is its public name. I control V to paste it. And then for the VIP, I would use rack node to VIP. So this one, this is what I'm looking for. The rack node to VIP, that's what I am going to use. So rack node to VIP, rack node to local domain. So it's not going to be a leaf node, it's still going to remain a hop node. So uh, let's go ahead and hit OK on that. Now, if we hit next, of course, it's going to test SSH and all of that stuff that we set up earlier. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this defaults to using um, our host only adapter uh, for our public, which is what we want. And then it's going to use the internal network that we created for ASM and private. I would like to leave it at this. It's not gonna use any of the other network interfaces. So let's hit go. So configure ASM using block devices, which we did. We are not working on the network file storage. We're using block devices. So do you want to create a separate automatic storage management disk group for the grid infrastructure management repository? Um, no, I don't want to create a separate. So I want to use all of that in one disk group, the one I created with the 45 gig. So I would use that one. So it's going to ask me here right now, um, I want to make sure that I change the discovery path. Now, remember, we talked about this earlier on. I want to change the discovery path to Oracle ASM uh, disks. That's going to be our new discovery path. So let's change our discovery path right here. It usually defaults to the dev SD star, but I would change the new, uh, let me wipe this out and then control V. Um, let me copy this from here. Let's copy that and then we paste it here with control V. So let's hit OK. So now it brings us our disks that are here. Now, if you notice, it changed right here. So we're going to use a CRS. First of all, we're going to name this OCR. OCR. So that's going to be used for uh, OCR and voting disks. And then we're going to use this CRS location. And here with ASM, there's something called redundancy. Uh, we're going to choose external because if we choose either flex or high, it needs to mirror into another disk group, which we don't have. So uh, we're going to choose external. And then we're going to go next. Uh, use same password for the account. I would use that Oracle. Oracle. It wouldn't like the password, but that's what I'm sticking to. Uh, we're, we're not going to do the intelligent platform. 
uh, management interface. Let's go next. We are not gonna register with any enterprise manager at this point. Um, ASM admin, so grid infrastructure, the grid user we created, that's why we created the grid user to be part of these groups. We're gonna leave them the way they are because we want grid to be the ASM admin, the ASM DBA and the ASM over. So we're gonna leave this that way. Um, the Oracle base, um, which is the foundation of the grid installation. In this case, um, Oracle base is what it uses. Uh, but we can also call it the grid base if you want to be a little bit more specific. Uh, this is the foundation of the grid installation. And this is where our grid home is going to be. You just want to make sure that you eyeball this and make sure that these are the right locations. And let's go next. So typically, uh, our inventory uh, belongs to O-Install. So we'll leave it that way. All right, I am not going to automatically run the configuration scripts. I want to run them when prompted and I want to run them as root. Now, I've never really ever tried using the automatically run them. You would have to use this and then put, of course, root credentials in here. But I want to run them manually when the time comes. So let's do our pre-checks. Now, remember, we filled some pre-checks. You don't be surprised to see them here. Um, those that are fixable, we will fix. Those that are not fixable, we would proceed. All right, so um, our pre-checks came. Um, it says uh, we failed on the soft limit stack, and this is the only fixable. Uh, this is a prerequisite condition to test whether the soft limit for maximum stack size is set correctly. So we succeeded on node two. That's an irony uh, because we did all the changes on both node on node one and then cloned it, uh, but it failed on rack node one. Um, I certainly might ignore this, but let's try. For, for, for the sake of it, let's fix and check again. So let me run this script. It says run the script only on node one. So let me go to node one and run that script. So this is node one. And let me run that script on node one and then see if it makes any change to our setup. So it checks again. All right, well, it comes back with the same error and says, well, uh, fixable, but we're not gonna fix it anymore. We're just gonna ignore all of this and proceed with our installation. Yes, we wanna ignore all of that. So here is a summary. You just wanna make sure that you eyeball this and make sure that it is what you want. So we are configuring for a new cluster. Uh, the base is upgrade, uh, the home is app one two uh, twelve two zero one grade. And then ASM Oper would be the privileged uh, users. So uh, inventory group, grid infrastructure. So if you take a look at all of this and it's looking good for you, then we go ahead and hit install. Now let's see how long this would take. Uh, we can open up the details <clears throat> just to kind of keep an eye on that. Now I'm not gonna pause the video. I'm just gonna let us watch this. Uh, in the event that anything comes up, we should be able to resolve that. Let me open this up and then we see what's going on.
I'm just gonna mute myself in the background. So um, it looks like we are at the point where we have to run some root scripts. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, the first one is the Aura inventory uh, script. So let's go ahead and run that on node one, and then we run that again on node two. Uh, Aura inventory completed, node two, Aura inventory completed. All right, so we head on back here and uh, this one is gonna take some time. So um, uh, this root specific scripts, we are gonna run it on note one first and that will take some time. So let's go ahead and do that. We are not gonna change that path. So it's gonna be performing about 19 different tasks. So again, I'm just gonna mute and stay
All right, so this hasn't frozen. This is gonna take some time here um, on this step. Um, so if you're, if you're watching, just you can go ahead and maybe just you know skip it forward a little bit, but this is gonna take some time here.
All right, so note one setup completed. Um, let's go over to note two setup. So let's run that script on note two. Uh, just make sure I copy that again. And then I do note two. Oh, I pasted twice. Just give me a second here. There was a bit of a lag. Okay, so yeah, let's do note two. We're not gonna make any change to that user local bin. And this shouldn't take long. Note one is the one that typically takes uh, that amount of time. So it does the relinking and we should be good. Once this finishes, then um, we should be good. This doesn't take half the time that one does. I mean, every installation is unique, but not two typically doesn't take that as long as not one does.
All right, we're getting close, guys. Uh, step 19 of 19. And we are done. So let's go back to our, our grid installation. Uh, now that we've run that on note one and note two, we can click OK. And this should take us to the final steps of uh, our installation. So uh, it's going to update the inventory. Um, hopefully, this shouldn't take too long anymore.
So I suppose uh, if you're watching, it's kind of like watching the grass grow. Um, certainly you can probably fast forward this uh, video to uh, when the installation is complete. Uh, because at that point, we would just be running some commands to make sure that we kind of see the health of our cluster. So um, it's still, you know, stuck on configuring the ASM and grid uh, infrastructure management repositories at this time. So um, I'll leave it going. It's going to be streaming. But if you want to fast forward till the end, uh, feel free to do that.
All right, guys. So let's see uh, this one here. Oracle cluster verification utility failed. Uh, this is certainly not a showstopper here. Let's take a look at the details. Plugin failed to perform. Uh, refer to the logs. This is it. Um, I'm just going to hit OK here. And we're going to skip this because it's still going to fail. So we're going to skip this. Bad effectively, setup completed with overall status as failed. Um, that's a strong word to use. All right, so, um, so that's good. Um, so finally, so um, we let's let's go ahead and run some checks. Let's go ahead and run some checks here just to test the health of our system. Uh, first of all, with the configuration finishing, I would first of all want to see um, there is certainly uh, the ASM instance running and the management DB instance running. So that's good. So um, um, I would go ahead as or as greed, uh, set my Oracle, my environment to ASM1. And so I would echo my Oracle home. They should give me my grid home. Um, I can echo my Oracle base just to see the environmental variables. <clears throat> and then um, let's go ahead and check some, let's run a few commands. Now let's check maybe the overall health of our, of our cluster. So CRS, CTL, uh, check cluster. Oh, let's do that. So it tells us here, <clears throat> that cluster ready services is online, synchronization services is online, event manager is online for rack node one and rack node two. So that's good enough. So uh, let's also go ahead and check uh, the health of our CRS um, cluster resource services. Um, it tells us here as well that CRS is online. Uh, CRS is online. Uh, the Oracle high availability services is online. And uh, we can also check um, the status of our resources. So CRS CTL uh, stat res minus T. So let's take a look at that. So online, 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 it looks like our resources are all online. Um, or our ASM online, online, uh, there is no ASM node three. So I'm not even sure why this is supposed to be like this normally. Uh, the target state and the current state, uh, it is offline because we don't have a note three on this one. So I'm not surprised to see that. Um, let's check, maybe let's use, maybe uh, uh, let's check the status of our has services. Um, let's check uh, has high availability services. Uh, check has Oracle high availability services is online. And then maybe we can also run some server CTL commands to check the status of our scan listener to, to see. So scan is running, all of those are running. Uh, let's perform an OCR check, uh, OCR check, OCR check. I knew there was something wrong with this. So let's do that. Um, that probably wouldn't come from here. I'm gonna have to mosey over to uh, the bin location to to check on that. So O C O C R check. I think my spelling was not right. O C R check. Let's do that. All right. So it says here uh, integrity check succeeded. So so far, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this would wrap up our video on a great installation. I hope you are ex as excited as I am that we were able to get this through. Um, in the next video, uh, we would, you know, uh, install the Oracle software and um, configure uh, an Oracle Rack database to run on these two nodes. Again, uh, if you liked the video, if it was useful for you, click on the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and also enable notifications so that you stay updated 
of when we release new content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.